Hello everyone and welcome to the RMTV Women's Podcast. This is episode 62. We had a conversation like literally 10 seconds ago <laughs> off camera about whether it was 62 or 63 and I won. Um, kickoff question this week comes from... Oh, yeah, Amy's not here. It's Chris. <laughs> yeah, probably, hi. That probably should be the first thing I say. Um, yeah, it's Chris this week. If you have a viewer of the channel, you would have seen, seen Chris before. He's been on a couple of podcasts before this. Um, kickoff question comes from H underscore Doyle 5 4 who asks, do you think the team need to get the crowd going first or do the fans need to be the one to get the team going first? Saw this last night from him and I literally, I've, it's one of those that I've always maybe had a little think about, but it's yeah. never something I've actually gone, hmm. Yeah, where, like, where do you want? whose job is it? Because end of the day, I'm, you're paying to be entertained, aren't yeah. you? So it, I think from the very start, it should be you know, set a tempo, set... Yeah. Uh, a good rhythm to the game from uh, from the team yeah. and then after a while there's a bit of a little thing that's where the fans have got to come yeah. into it yeah. Um, but yeah I, I think a little bit of both but originally I would go for the team because they've yeah. got to set the tone I think I think we've all sat through a game where like you've immediately sat down it's like two or three minutes into kick off and you think oh this is going to be so boring yeah. this. Like, you can just get it you can just see how the game is going to go but then I think the thing with like Liverpool women is we do start really well. Mm-hmm. The first 10, 15 minutes is always when we're at our best, I think. Yeah. So like I think that gets the crowd going and then like I as you said, as the game goes on, the players start to tire, that's when it's probably the fans turn to be like, Oh, come on, like keep going, blah blah blah. So yeah. yeah I you, think, you wanna know you wanna know people have your back and sometimes yeah. it does take a few yells from the crowd just to you know, get revved up and yeah. get the get the emotions going and get the blood going and just getting back into the game. So, yeah, yeah a, a bit of both. But yeah. I think uh, originally because fans are paying to be entertained, I'd say yeah. team to kick off with team. Yeah, but yeah, def- definitely a definitely a, a partnership yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Um, move moving on to Liverpool women. Then obviously we face Bristol on Sunday. Um, gained our first point of the season. A, a well needed point yeah. really our first league goal of the season as well um, Bristol took the lead <sighs> and it, it, it was a very dodgy goal yeah it's one of them isn't it because I, I think just as you rightly said Liverpool start good in games yeah. and have maybe faded so far this season again this or again uh, on Sunday started really really well first 15 minutes yeah. plenty of pressure yeah. plenty of balls going out wide to, yeah. to Charles and, uh, and Clark and then you you can't really count for a, a miss hit cross when it just flies into the far corner yeah. past the keeper because Preuss, she's at the near post, correctly so. The yeah. ball's on that side of the yeah. goal. She's expecting the cross to yeah. come in. She's whatever. expecting the cross to come in and then she'll reposition herself. Yeah. But when the cross goes in straight away, it, it's it's literally in the top corner of the far post. Yeah, so like, it, it is physically impossible to get over there. I don't know if, it, if, you've, if you've watched the FA player version back but like whoever the commentator was was just like chatting like not yeah. very normal and then he yeah. was like oh it's gone in like he was just he was so surprised himself like yeah. everyone was but then as soon as it went in it was just a collective because oh, we God's we were up in the press box yeah. on uh on sunday so we were like very top it, yeah like, yeah very back row and now I, I was chatting i was chatting to amy and just saying you know about just generic chat about about the game and, and the season so far and then as she hits the cross, you you can see yeah, you can it, see it going because when the ball when the ball goes in the air, the net is you can see the net behind it and yeah. then it stays in yeah. that direction. Yeah. Um, and you just know that, you know Price has got no chance after no. that. Um, and then as I say, it was a good response in you know, in the end because it could have been two nil. Uh, Sam and you know, she, I, I think we all yeah. thought it probably was going to be when she went in, when she went through on goal, but as it turned out, it's probably a bit of a turning point. Yeah. To be honest with you, the missed chance for well, Bristol City. So I thought after Bristol scored, they had like a good period of like five minutes where like they really put Liverpool under pressure again. It seemed to like give them a boost, and like you like it, they could have been two 0 yeah. up at a certain point. Ebony Salmon could have scored again. I think she hit like the side net and at one point yeah, as well. Yeah, she's through on goal, and it's the old adage of you got to go across the goalkeeper. Yeah. But she went near post and. She hit the side net, and you could tell she knew that yeah. that, that she should have gone across the keeper. Yeah. But as you say, after that, I just felt the girls got shake got shaken a little bit. Yeah. Because I think Roberts was uh, giving away balls in midfield. It just wasn't sticking. Yeah. It, it, the few little flicks around the corner that just weren't working. And yeah. 
they had to kind of regain their composure after that. And, and, and I think they did because the out ball in the end, I thought Charles had a, had a very, very good game. She was she getting was, around she it. Amazing. She was getting around the full back dykes at, at will, yeah. really. Yeah. And the problem was with her and Clark because I think they're both, in the end, I think they had you know, both both very good games. Yeah. It was the final ball. Oh, yeah. It, it, it really was the final ball that prevented Liverpool from, from getting the first win of the season because yeah. we both spoke to to Vicky after the game and she said that while she was you know, pleased she wasn't exactly over the moon because yeah. she felt that the, the win should have yeah. the win should have come and I can completely understand that yeah. because there were more than enough chances to, to get the win I feel like that's been our biggest problem this season I feel like every single game we've said afterwards and like our post-match or on the podcast like all of our games have been winnable because we have had opportunities it's just like we get to like the edge of the area and it's like Oh, what do we do? Yeah. Do I have a shot to a pass yeah. here? And then by the time they've made up the mind, whatever they want to do is yeah. is you can no longer do. Because la- last season, um, and again, I, I said uh, after the game to, to Amy on uh, on Sunday, I'm not singling out Sweetman Kirk, but when you have a forward who's in form, it's yeah. easier because then she's almost making the midfielder's mind up for them in terms of where to play the ball, how to help how to help set them up. Yeah, and. As I say, because she hasn't got her first goal of the season yet, um, because you know, last season she had such a good campaign, yeah. sometimes forwards do take that extra touch. They do hesitate when, when making a run, yeah. and therefore that can lead to midfielders questioning their decisions as well. Yeah. Um, because certainly in the context of the game, taking Superman Kirk off for, for Babaji Day, ultimately it worked and it provided a big threat, but... I said to you at the time that it's a big call. It is. <laughs> it it is. was a very bold call yeah. for Vicky Jepsen. It's one of them, though. Like, do you, for the next game, do you put Sweetman Kirk on the bench? Because I can't remember what game it was a few weeks ago, but she missed out. She didn't, she didn't start. She was on the bench. And that I remember saying to Amy, that's probably frustrated her so much. Like, for the next game, she'll want to go on and score. And obviously, she hasn't. And she's gone two games since then doing it. And it's like... When, when does it come to the point where you literally have to say to it, listen, it's just not happening at the minute. Yeah. At some point in this season it will, but right now I feel like they, I feel like Babajid or Clark mm. or even Kirsty Lennon up yeah. front might offer us something better. Because it, it got to the point where she, you could just you could see her frustration yeah. boiling over with yeah. her and I think at that point as a manager you've you've got to you've got to make a logical decision about what's best for the team, what's best for her because just because, you know, they're the number nine. Yeah. I, I I don't personally think everyone anyone should have a you know, a God given right. Yeah, just to, to start yeah. football games. Yeah. I, I think you've got to earn the right for the shirt. I've, yeah. I've always said that. And, you know, yes, there's big names all around the world, but in th- if if you're not informed when someone is or yeah. could provide a better option, then but that that you know that's why managers get the pay, get get paid the, yeah. the money that they do. Yeah. Um, in the end, as well because. You know, say the penalty had been given with Sweetman Kirk on the pitch, you know, she'd she be up for taking it. But yeah. I've always wondered about: is it best? You know, people say give someone a penalty to to get them their first goal of the season or whatever. But yeah. do you really want someone that much out of form yeah. not taking it? I mean, in the end, it was a very very good penalty from from Mel Lawley. Yeah. And I think she would have took it anyway if Sweetman Kirk was still on the f- the field because mm-hmm. she's been our our set piece taker so far this yeah. season. Obviously, Christine Murray's been out injured too, who did it last year, but. I feel like just I feel like Mel Lawley probably would have took it anyway. Just of are you surprised that in the final ten minutes, yeah, Vicky didn't kind of push the push it a bit more. Oh, well, of, I thought she was going to make another sub. Yeah, I thought she might leaving Murray on the bench, leaving yeah. Lynn on the bench. She, didn't, thought, she yeah. felt I felt like it was a case of we're in a position now to get our first point. Yeah, I don't want to jeopardize this. Yeah, I, I, I thought. You know, the game was there to be won, really. Yeah. But I just felt in the last 10 minutes, there was a little bit of a, a more cautious approach. Yeah, definitely. And then I think also with the impact that Babaji made, I think maybe she thought, well, she's on now. Mm-hmm. She's got the energy. She's obviously made one thing happen. She might make something else happen. Yeah. So I'll leave it as it is. Obviously, she's probably got in the back of her mind thinking, we need this point desperately. Yeah. We, we need it. So, yeah, they did look a bit cautious in certain moments, but then I, I probably think Babaji making the impact that she did is probably in, in her mind think, going, oh, I've put her on for a reason. She's my impact player now for these last 10 minutes rather than putting Lynn on for five minutes and she might not even get a touch of the ball type of thing. Because yeah. you know I mean? her, her pace was 
frightening. I think yeah. certainly against Coventry, I think she's earned a start. Uh, Babaji Day, I know she uh, yeah. played against uh, against Sheffield as well. Um, but even going into the Birmingham game, I think I think she'll be right at the front of, uh, of, of Vicky's mind to, to yeah. start that game. Yeah. Um, and overall. The game kind of did kind of fizzle out it in did, the end, yeah. like, last five minutes or yeah. so, and that, that was frustrating. As I say, that maybe kind of influences my thinking about could she have gone for it a little bit more. But yeah. in the end, first point on the board, as I say, up upper place. It's yeah. it was just a bit of a morale booster just to think. Look, you're getting your first point. It's it, as I said after the game, one point's better than nothing. Yeah, and that, that, yeah. That, that was always going to be the mentality in the last five minutes. Um, and you know, I, I've. A cup game that I think kind of it, it does allow a bit for a, for a bit of a distraction. I yeah. think. Allows for maybe a few a few people to get a run out. Is it a welcome um, one though? Because you're thinking if you've if you've got your first point on the board. If they win it's a welcome one. <laughs> if they win it's a welcome one, but then if they go another defeat mm. and it's like you're literally right back to square one again. You're right back where you started. Yeah, yeah. I I think there's probably quite a good feeling after the game. Yeah. Um I would say with all due respect to Coventry, I mean we'll we'll, we'll touch on this later in the match preview show. But mm. I, you know, it's a game I think Liverpool should be winning. We should be winning. Yeah. Um, and that kind of winning helps with momentum, helps with confidence. Yeah. Um, so in a way, look, you, you could say it, it's it's a good break for Liverpool, yeah. but it, it it only is as long as they win the game. Yeah, exactly. Well, there's there's some that we we spoke a lot, quite a bit about England last week just because of like international friendlies mm-hmm. and all that, that was going on. But I just wanted to get your your thoughts on it quickly about like how you think England's post World Cup performance has been because obviously we haven't done we haven't done too well yeah. with five, five defeats it's it's not the best it's like I I looked at Phil Neville's comments after the Belgium game um, when he said England would have to suffer more pain um, why and yeah I, why because. The Euros, obviously, the Euros are here in uh, in in a few years' time. Yeah. It is, you know, going to be predominantly friendlies in that period. Yeah. Um, that that England would be playing, which it, it's you know, I I do wonder about that sometimes with the lack of competitive games in the build up to to a major championships. I've seen it before where you might lack that sharpness, but yeah. in the end, look, if you say they're going to suffer more pain, is he prepared to lose every single game up until yeah, the Euros? Up until the Euros, and it's like, um, oh God, we need to win now. I, I thought, for someone, for a manager who was so passionate yeah. during the World Cup, you know, after the Norway game, came out and said, Lucy Bronze is the best player in the world. Yeah. And, and, and then and, plays and, and it in midfield. And <laughs> plays her in midfield against, uh, against Portugal. I'm I'm just a, I'm just a little bit confused at the moment because I don't know whether I, I know that he was in the running for the, the USA, USA well, job at least yeah. with the bookies anyway. <laughs> that would have been, I mean, um, that they can have, they can have him to be in my opinion <laughs> if, if if they want him they can have him. But like, like it would have been you, you're not the biggest fan. Not the biggest no, fan. No, I just think I think he th- at times I feel like he thinks he's above the role that he has and he's outspoken. I'll, and I'll say that. I feel like he just sometimes I think. Why, why are you doing that? Why? Yeah. Like, Some, as I say, just go and comment about suffering more pain. To me, if, if I'm someone that's listening to that after such a successful World Cup, yeah. where you know, and and they got they got to the semi finals, I'm sure they have taken it to extra Should, time at least yeah. with Steph Hall's yeah. penalty. Um, I'm not really getting full of confidence because yeah. again, would he have said that because they were tuning up in the game? So they win the game two or three nil, and he says yeah. oh, we're going to have to suffer pain. No, and Belgium, they weren't even at the World Cup. They, you know, they're, yeah. they're not. You know, they're eighteenth in the world at the moment. England fifth in the world because uh, well, joint fifth, I should say, yeah. uh, with with Sweden. Um, that's not a good attitude. That's no. really not a good attitude. I'm, I, if if I'm a player, I want to be listening to manager hyping me up and saying yeah. what a, what a journey this is going to be for the yeah. next two years before yeah. the European Championships because. For most of these girls, unless maybe there's a World Cup uh, in, in England, um, yeah. the Euros in England is going to be one of the biggest thing. moments of, yeah. of their careers. Yeah. And that's not something I want to be hearing yeah. in the build-up to the tournament. Because you look at the games as a whole, where the performances, the results haven't been ideal, but the performances, again, they've not been terrible. It's no. not as if against Norway they lost 2-1. It's not as if they lost 4-5 yeah. you know, against Brazil. 
against Brazil, it was an utter smash and grab. Yeah. Because England in the first half should have scored at least once. I've I rewatched it. I rewatched it this morning, and Beth Mead's finish, where or Beth Mead's chance where she goes from the defender yeah. inside the box. Oh, it, it's a shocker, really, yeah. when when yeah. when she's in that kind of one-on-one situation, and then uh, Dabina, uh, 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 first one's a howler. Yeah. And the second one, it, it's a deflected strike. Yeah. To get the two goals, and then again, England should have got a, should have got a good should have got a draw yeah. because Bob, uh, Barbara's saved from yeah. uh, from Stanway at the end. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot, a little bit, a little bit of it needs to be kind of taken into perspective. Where performances, are, look, the next two years for England aren't about results. The no. next two years for England are about performances, yeah. gelling the team, making yeah. sure that it's prepared for the European Championships. And the performance wasn't bad again against Portugal. Yes, it took a goalkeeping nightmare. Yeah, but, but like, they should have been four or five up yeah, before that. Yeah. So again, Phil Neville has he's got to keep heads above water. Because again, the Portugal result probably would have liked to have been more comfortable, and uh, an Ellie Roebuck in the end to know hit the bar and came back yeah. down onto her, but just about well, kept kept the win for England. Yeah. Um, I wonder what team he'll pick for the Olympics. I wonder who he's going to take to be honest, because he said he's going to pick out to like Scotland and that as well, isn't he? It's not, it's not just going to be all England players. So, so I'm thinking for, for Wales, you'd imagine, you'd imagine if Jess Fishlock. Yeah, if she get, if she's yeah, she a shout, um, Lucy Bronze is like definitely going. Wow, really? She, yeah, joking, he's I'm definitely joking. gonna take yeah. it. Um, Scotland, I don't know. I think Erin Cuthbert's within a shout. Erin Cuthbert, Kim Little. Yeah. Uh, um, it, it it it's a tough one. Isn't if Christy Money because, plays well, she might yeah. go. You never know. Because there are again, you, it is the Olympics, so it's Great Britain, but. Mm-hmm. It's it will be predominantly English because they are the most successful of yeah. the home nations. Yeah. Um. Because I I remember for the Olympics um in in London, when uh, when the men's team was getting chosen and people were complaining about uh not having too many players outside of England, but it, it's about the quality. It's not yeah, whether yeah, it's yeah. not just forcing them in for the sake of it. Yeah. Um. So for for the Olympics, as I say, it's going to be predominantly English. Yeah. Um. And again, that that'll be a testament because he's. I think he probably he's will. He's never experienced that, has he? No, sometimes. no. He's not going to be able to choose all English, so it's no. who he leaves out of that, and it's yeah. what kind of message he gives to the girls that he does leave out. Yeah. Because that, that's going to be a blow for them as well, missing the Olympics, even though the, you know, that chance may come around again. Yeah. Um, and for some girls, look, representing Great Britain will be a big thing, but I'd say representing England in England mm. is probably going to be bigger. Be better. To be honest. Yeah. No, definitely. It would be interesting to see. Like, I don't know when that. This must be early, early next year that that all that comes out with the draw about the uh, Olympics and all stuff like that. Before, yeah, I'd imagine uh, most draws take place around December, January time, yeah. don't they? So, yeah. again, that's probably when his decision making starts. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll just quickly other WSL results at the weekend. Redden beat Everton three two. Um, Man City beat Birmingham three nil. Which is an unbeaten start for them, which is really yeah, good for them. And, and no goals conceded. No goals as well. conceded, which I'm pretty sure is a, a true fact. I hope it is. <laughs> um, Man United beat Spurs three 0 which was surprising. I thought I thought Spurs was going to give them a good game. There. Yeah, considering after how well Spurs performed at the London Stadium yeah. against West Ham, and yeah. that 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 was a, that was a very good result for yeah. them. Um, on Everton, I mean, because I, 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 I cover Everton home yeah. games as well yeah. uh, for for the WSL, and. It was a bit of a throwback to last season, to be honest with you, because Everton's three goal, or sorry, Reading's three goals, uh, all of them came from set pieces, uh, and yeah. it was quite poor. I mean, one Jay- of them was like a Jade Moore's, one was like right at the front post. Yeah, that, well? yeah that that was. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've always said um, I'm pretty much an advocate of people getting fined if they don't beat if they don't beat the near post on uh, on corners because it just <laughs> happens that regularly. It's very very frustrating. Yeah. But when it works, obviously, uh, you know, fair play. Yeah. Both of her goals are actually headers. Uh, for yeah. from set pieces, and, you know, J- it's not often Jade Moore gets two. No, that's true. Yeah, but <laughs> um, she was buzzing. And again, the third straight from a straight from a set piece as well. Yeah. That will that will hurt Willie Kirk. Yeah, because he, he would have been fuming after that game. Yeah, because th- their defense has improved. Yeah, you know, they've played so well this season. The the red so the the Birmingham win start yeah. of the season. I thought that was a great result, but then the way they performed against Bristol City um, was a fantastic, yeah. it was a fantastic result. Um, yeah. It was. Because I've been watching Everton, uh, certainly from a professional 
you know, a, a reporter capacity yeah, yeah. for uh, for two seasons or well, for a season a bit now, and that was by far the most dominant performance I thought in, in terms of both attack and defence. Um, Chloe Kelly, Player of the Month. For the, she did for get Player of the Month. The, uh, yeah. WSL as well. Um, yeah. Two fantastic goals. Two yeah. fantastic goals. Uh, one first one cut in from the left, hitting off the post. Yeah. The second one, oh, if when you know, when you look at a goal time and time again, you think there is no point in the keeper even bothering Di- yeah, to dive. Like, yeah. That's when you know it's That's a good hit. It was yeah. ab- absolute perfection to the top corner. Yeah. And I was speak. I spoke to her after that game as well. It's the first proper preseason. You know, she had a little bit of a knock, but first proper preseason that she's had for a while because she's you know, she's still only very young. Yeah. She's a very good player. She got called um, up for England, the England for squad England. as well. Like she didn't play, but um, she got to train and stuff, didn't yeah. she? So and like that'd be a great experience for yeah. her as well. And even against Manchester City, she caused she caused problems. She yeah. had Everton's best chance, um, and she's just electric at the moment. Yeah. She scored uh, from uh, a tap in from close range the yeah. weekend as well. So three goals so far this season. In the in the league for her, um, yeah, she's got to be happy with that, doesn't she? Yeah, I think she can go from strength to strength. I think yeah. she's a very special player in the making. Yeah, um, West Ham three one against Brighton, and mm-hmm. then the the London derby between Chelsea and Arsenal turned out to be two one win for Chelsea, which a few people were surprised. That like, you were just saying to me that Arsenal really didn't perform yeah. like like you thought they would. I, I watched the game back and I thought they ran out of ideas. To be yeah. honest with you, they. Took the lead through a really nice goal from uh, from, uh, from Van der Donk. Sorry if I get my words out. Uh, Mida Marshy playing a little bit of a deeper role to to assist Van der Donk. Uh, really nice finish as well. But after that, Chelsea just took over. To be honest with you, um, Beth England. We were saying before as well about how how well she started the season. Yeah, Obviously, she's goal been, on, she's been amazing. Yeah, goal on her debut against Brazil. She, she which, played for Liverpool not last season, the season before, and I was so gutted when she left. Like here and um, Ingle went back to Chelsea, and I was like, oh. Like that, that was just like because we lost so many plays, it was just heartbreaking. And then to see her, the way she performed last yeah. season and then how she started this season, she, she's being that focal point for Chelsea as well. Yeah. Number nine, her back. Always, obviously, there is a certain pressure that comes with yeah. that. Um, we'll know from any club, but Arsenal's defending for the first one is it, it's poor. Yeah. Um, they give the ball away in midfield, Kirby gets away, the Arsenal don't track the runners, ball into England, good touch and, uh, and a finish from close range. And then t- well, Forrest it, It's a good hit, again, yeah. but not being closed down from outside the box. Yeah. And it was a goal that had been coming. It was a goal that had been yeah. coming. Um, you look at how well Arsenal played last season. And, well, they went to Chelsea last year and they won 5-0. Yeah. It, it, it's, you know, it's quite a remarkable turnaround in, in such a short space of time. Arsenal have probably strengthened as yeah. well since since last season's game against Chelsea. So for, it to, for roles to be reversed and Chelsea come away with the three points, it's like... Like Chelsea being business this season because yeah. no, they start did they have like four draws at the start yeah, of last season last three season. or four they didn't start very well did they and it was it was about there was a lot of questions of whether they'll finish in the top four well, you, at, at some point but you can't win the title in the first few months of the no, season but no, you, you, definitely you, you, not. you can always lose it yeah. uh, and that's that's what Chelsea did last season but because to put it into perspective if Arsenal won that game. Uh, they'd have been six points ahead of Chelsea after four games, and yeah. already that's potentially a bit of a chasm that you're looking at. That winning that means they're both within three points of Manchester City, and with Manchester City in Champions League action, yeah, that's tonight, you know, isn't it? Yeah, the, you know, Atletico Madrid potentially a, oh, a very tough tie as well because Atletico knocked them out last Tony season. Tony Duggan winner, I'm calling it now. Yeah. It, 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 Saying, I have to say, la- last season I think I mentioned on one of the earlier shows I didn't know. Too much about Atletico Madrid, I got to be honest, but the, yeah. the, the way they performed home and away against uh, Manchester City and, and ultimately won the tie was was fantastic. Yeah, them. yeah. Well, NWSL scores then. Just quickly to run through it, it was the last round of fixtures apart from um, the s- from the, the playoff final yeah. coming up this weekend. How do you? <laughs> Because I know they, they use it in rugby league over here in terms yeah. of the playoff system, but what, what what do you think about? I don't like it. I think it's win, stupid. Winning winning the league yeah. and then not winning and then the not title. actually winning the league. It's like I've I've always thought it's it's it, it, it is silly. It is silly, but they've always done it in like the MLS, haven't they yeah. as well? Yeah, they, like, they like conferences over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose you can kind of flip it back to the. Playoffs over here is like saying, "Well, does sixth place have a right to be promoted over third place?" Uh, yeah, but it's exactly. exciting. So maybe there's a bit of contradictory. I, it, it is, but. it is silly, but like also, like I mean, 
Cause... It's one of them where you think, well, it's not, it doesn't really affect me, so I'm not too bothered. Like, <laughs> yeah. if, it, if it was in the WSL, I wouldn't like it. I think that okay. I, I'd be like, why are you doing that? Like, yeah. don't do it. But it's something that's always been done in America. So, like, to them, it's just normal. Well, you know, NFL, NBA, yeah. MLS, as you say. Uh, th- there's always that, that kind of playoff mentality, isn't there? Yeah. So, yeah. It, they just love to win, don't they? So. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it, it's something you just get used to. I think Americans probably still get a bit confused over draws. <laughs> to yeah, me. yeah. Because um, I'm first time I ever heard NFL that there's no draws. It's like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Why? No, but um, yeah, you know, interesting end to the season. Um, yeah, well, most, well, it's Portland's. North Carolina Courage, Chicago Red Stars and Seattle Rainer were in the playoffs this weekend. So for every other team, the season's over. Um, Portland drew 0-0 at, with Washington. Utah beat Houston Dash 2-1. North Carolina beat Sky Blue 3-2. And then Orlando drew 2-2 with Seattle. So that was actually an interesting game because if Seattle would have won, they would have gone a place above Portland, yeah. which would have meant that they faced Chicago, which is arguably... You'd say See, it's the, the you'd say it's the easier tie Chicago out of North Carolina country because like they they won yeah. like the shield, but then I think Chicago Red Stars are probably favourites. I think I think they'll win it to well, be honest. They've well, five wins in a row just going into the playoffs. Like Sam Kerr up front, who's yeah. just won the Golden Boot for the fifth consecutive season. She like. she is what she is what you call a natural goal scorer, yeah. and I remember when um, I think it was during. The World Cup, she got, she got linked to, to Chelsea. To Chelsea, yeah. Which... Do you reckon she was linked to Real Madrid a few weeks ago as well? Because they've just started their team yeah. up again, haven't they? But I don't yes. think she'll go. She would be a Galactico up, up and put it that yeah. way. Still, still only 26. But for if Chelsea would have made that move, I mean, look, it, it could still happen. That would be a huge statement for, for the WSL to start attracting global yeah. world stars. Yeah. Um, because you look at a record up until 2014, it's respectable. It's yeah, not something yeah. that you would look at and think. It's it's I'm, it's when I'm, she start yeah, gets amazing. like the big moves. Yeah. in America, it, when she started, like yeah, that's when she really came on the scene. It, when it was well, it first well, in Australia she got uh, 52 and 49 for Perth Glory, yeah, which I mean, is that's, that's staggering, and then 28 and 40 for Sky Blue FC, and 34 in in, in 40 yeah. as as well. Just. Fantastic, yeah. uh, fantastic record. She's an amazing player. I'd love to. I'd, I mean, the, for the downside of her playing for Chelsea, it would have been amazing to see her, like yeah. in our in the WSL. It would have been so good. Yeah, and you know, at, at the World Cup as well, she was obviously a Australia's standout yeah. player as well. Yeah. Um, and she'll be she'll be a big threat. She'll be sure. a big threat to uh, to all the teams in there. Um, of course, as well, uh, Seattle Rain. Uh, They've got Rapino up front. Yeah, Rapino, uh, Fishlock, but the uh, the yeah. out or well, the incoming USA coach as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's in news actually. We'll 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 go. We'll move on to news. News, 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 news. news. We'll move that as the as the first first topic because he is rumored to have Reigns current coach. I don't know how to say his name. <laughs> Vla- Vlatko and Dondovsky. There we go. Um, <laughs> he's rumored Thank to you. be be the next manager. It hasn't been confirmed, but it's more than likely gonna mm-hmm. be him. Um, do you think it's good, bad? Don't um, really care. He's, he's certainly experienced within women's yeah, he's, football, and um, he's experienced in like. American women's football. Yeah. He'll, he'll have a good relationship with like a, with a lot of the players as well. So that's probably what they've what they've looked at. Yeah, he's, he's got a big knowledge because uh, I, I was looking at um, the Seattle Rain squad and yeah. you know at least most of their squad is you know USA based. Yeah. So he'll 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 have a good knowledge of yeah. of the United States, uh, Kansas City Comets, FC Kansas City, and Rain FC is his, his managerial pedigree. Yeah. Um, so he's certainly been you know, around for a good few yeah. years. He's got that kind of experience. Of, uh, of managing women's teams, managing in women's football, um, and a li- well, he's had Dabina, Crystal Dawn, yeah. Jody Taylor as well. So yeah, you know, he's got experience in managing. He top knows quality. what he's doing, doesn't he? I, I think if someone, with all respect to Phil Neville, if he'd had taken over the USA, or if you know, if if he had managed to land that role, how he would have landed right on his feet there if he'd have got that. Oh, big time! But it, I think it's about players respecting who's coming in as well yeah. and I think at least with 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 Andodovsky he's recognised already in America yeah. so then I think the USA team would have known how to 
what, what to expect from him. Yeah. If um, Alex Morgan would have walked into that first meeting when Phil Neville was sitting there, <laughs> she's probably thinking, I'm not listening to what you're saying. Oh, Whereas, like, we're in, they'll probably think, oh. It's like, oh, I thought it was Gary. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was Gary, yeah. He, just wouldn't, he wouldn't have been able to get the back of the dressing room. That's probably the most important thing. Whereas, like, you know, like you said, he's such an experienced manager, yeah. knows, knows a lot of the players, knows the way the American League works. So, you know, you'll, I think he'll be a, he'll do a good job for them. I think. Yeah, it, it's not as if he's it's not as if it's a project. It's not no. as if he's having to rebuild anything. No. Um, he's he's going to have good players from the off. Be he, interesting what type of squad he picks though, because especially it, well, for, their squad's been probably set in stone for the last like two years. It's mm-hmm. been pretty much the same players called up to each camp. Yeah. So you know they they have a camp in January. So like, who who who's he going to pick? Again. Like all those players on the fringes, like Casey Short, and they like, uh, came in for the victory tour, tour games. Like, is she gonna still be in his minds? Th- those type of things. You know if I mean? if I was a new manager, the first thing I'd be wary of is upsetting the apple cart. I'd, mm-hmm. I'd be very wary of of upsetting the established the established team. Uh, and of course, you know, as a manager, your role, your uh, your, your input is to is to form the squad that you think can go out and win things yeah. because again there'll be an expectation on the Olympics and obviously going for the for the hat trick of uh, of World, of World Cups Cup. as well and that that would be a very very big challenge yeah. very very big yeah. challenge for them yeah. because in a few years time you know you'd expect France to be good again you'd expect England Netherlands, Netherlands growing team as well yeah. obviously reach the finals yeah. so again a big challenge for them because yeah. There probably isn't a bigger challenge. Big shoes to fill in Jill Ellis, isn't it? A bigger job. And Jill Ellis, um, Women's Coach of the Year, two World Cups. She's 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 got the most wins as a manager for USA now and stuff like that. So So her pedigree is outstanding, but it'd be a big big test for him to to go in and establish himself as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, We've mentioned Chloe Kelly getting Player of the Month. Uh, It was announced today that England versus Germany... did he play Germany? I hope that's the right one. At Wembley. At Wembley on the 9th of November yeah, is now is now sold out. Some of the girls were tweeting, weren't they? Saying, are we yeah, they've been tweeting for a few sold days. Out, yeah. I didn't see an official England tweet, but you couldn't go on and buy anymore. So no. it said sold out. So, you know, it's sold that's out. fantastic. That. So, Phil, you best I get the win there. Because, <laughs> you know. But no, that, that, is, that is fantastic. That is absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, 80 to 90,000 at Wembley. Obviously, it's going to be the biggest ever. Uh, attendance for for a women's yeah. game in England, yeah. um, staggering, and it, it just shows how far they've come. Because I thought for, during the World Cup it was a huge step for the first game against you know, the first game France South Korea to be on BBC One and the, yeah. the prime time BBC One. That was a yeah. huge step in itself. But for people you know, paying the money, going to watch the girls at Wembley, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, and then women in Iran made history as well mm-hmm. a, a couple of days ago by. Um, Finally, after 38 years, being allowed to entry into yeah. into a football stadium, so you know thousands of them bought tickets. All went. And there was a few videos like going around and of like you know their first time in stadium stuff like that. And it, it's mad to think that that's only just happened now for them. Yeah, it, 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 it's a horrible thought because we're we're just not used to that yeah. kind. We're just not used to that kind of uh, way of living. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but fan, fantastic for them, and I think it's another way that. I, I love sport as a whole. Obviously, yeah. I love football, but just the idea of sport bringing everyone together Definitely. and just you know, sport breaking down barriers. Um, you know, obviously, going in and, and watching the game, and hopefully, you know, that obviously continues. That, yeah. you know, that barrier's now been broken. Yeah, um, and it's a huge step, obviously, for for, for, for women's rights um, as yeah, well. A really you know, big step. quality out there. Yeah. Um, so fantastic to see. Really, really good. Yeah, really good. Well, that's everything. Um, Build up show will be out on Friday, so keep an eye out for that. Um, go back and watch all our post match content from Sunday's game. Um, we've got an interview with Jepson, Mel Lawley, and Becky Jean, so go and check them out. Um, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. Remember to like the video, and we'll see you all next week with a new po- Well, hopefully, it's Amy. <laughs> it, it's pro- it'll probably be Amy. I'll definitely be here. Uh, it'll probably be Amy sitting there. Um, but yeah, we'll see you all next week.